a heads up that we're going to get a market collapse. And this chart really tells that story. This is the ACWI, uh, All Country World Index, uh, performance year to date. Uh, this was uh, a month ago, broken down by country. And notice how there's just one country doing anything. Actually, America, as of a month ago, represented 120% of the year-to-date return of the all-country world index, which I thought was fascinating. So what I did was I took the 40 largest stock market indexes in the world outside of America and equally weighted it. Just goes to show you that when America was up the last couple of years, it wasn't because of what was happening here. It was happening despite what was happening here. Stocks all over the world were going up. So notice the new highs in the S&P and our equally weighted global index collapsing. And now America's catching down. So I want to compare you know, the, the, the gold versus stocks question. I don't care about gold versus the S&P. I want to know what the crazies are doing. And the crazies, when they want to buy US stocks, they're not buying S&Ps or the Dow. They're buying Russell 2000. When the crazies want to be in the precious metals, they're not buying gold. They're buying silver, right? Higher beta moves more. Come on, right? So we want to see what the crazies are doing. So we're going to compare the Russell 2000 to silver and look at it as a ratio. And where is this collapse starting this month? It's the exact high where the collapse in the ratio started 18 years ago. So again, perfectly logical area. Gold miners are now outperforming the S&P 500 for the first time in forever. Right? How many of these gold bugs have been telling people to buy gold the last couple of years? Could not have been a worse decision. But things have changed. Right? We're getting that defensive rotation. And where is the relative strength starting in gold miners? The exact same place it started a couple of years ago. Again, very logical areas. We don't have to complicate this. Commercial hedgers, the smart money, have their largest net long position in platinum ever. It's probably not because they think it's going lower. I think we squeeze, I think we like platinum. If we're above the lows uh, from 2016 in platinum, I think we need to be long with the commercial hedgers. Here's palladium breaking out to all-time highs. How many things can you name right now that are breaking out to all-time highs? I can't think of any, and I look at 5,000 charts a week. Palladium is breaking out, that stands out. If we're above the highs in 2000 in palladium, I think we need to be long. Here's an ETF. Again, if we're above the, uh, the highs earlier this year, I think we could be long. If we're not, all bets are off. And then finally, I know you're kicking me out. Last thing I want to say is credit, right? This is, this is the key, is credit. Forget, you know, all, every crypto can go to zero tomorrow, no one would care. Every pot stock in the, could go to zero tomorrow, no one will care. These are little, tiny, irrelevant markets, right? Institutions, the big money, can't play in the little kid sandbox. They got to play in the big boy sandbox. And the biggest boy sandbox is the bond market. If you want to see if there's real fear out there and there's stress and credit, that is going to happen before the stock market collapses. So we want to look at a chart of high yield bonds relative to US Treasury bonds, right? And if we're breaking out, that's evidence that credit spreads are narrowing. That's good for stocks. If this is collapsing, that's evidence of stress and credit. That means something's wrong, something's up. So here's junk versus US Treasury bonds. This could potentially be a failed breakout and we collapse. That would be consistent with stocks collapsing as well. Here's credit spreads looked at another way, junk bonds versus investment grade bonds, same idea, risk off and risk, risk off. If this is a failed breakout and we collapse, that's a big problem. We didn't even get over bottom momentum. That's characteristic of a downtrend. And you look at credit default swaps, last chart, um, we're spiking. We haven't seen stress in credit until now. We saw no stress in credit at the first quarter lows, none whatsoever, which was suggestive along with the breadth improvements that we needed to be buying stocks. There was no stress in credit. Things have changed now. Bigmarkettrends.com slash breakout profits. That's what I got. Thank you, JC.